Howdy, two sixteeners. This is Professor Kaufman, and what follows will be a video trying to demo how to use the SFTP extension in VS Code to sync code between Grace and your local machine. I'm going to sully my cells and make use of a Windows machine on here to get some of the full effect, but the instructions that we follow will be mostly platform neutral. And so if you're inclined to the Mac OS persuasion, uh, most of the instructions here should be fairly obvious how to proceed. Now I've done a reasonably fresh install of VS Code, but test a few things out. As you would start it up on Windows, you'd probably punch the little Windows key and type something like VS and then code, and if it's installed, you should launch it there. Similarly, I think it's like command or apple space to pull up the sort of command interpreter, search for a program to run thing on Mac OS, and if you type VS Code, or maybe just even code, you should be able to find it. You'll probably be greeted by a little welcome screen that looks sort of like this, and the next couple steps can be in, done in different orders. Uh, so we'll start uh, first with the extension part, but then set up a uh, local folder where we'll do most of the work. Uh, the idea here is going to be uh, that the extension manages synchronizing stuff between your local machine and the remote machine. That will allow you, as you save files, to see that uh, change reflected on the remote machine and then uh, be able to compile and run things there in a terminal of your choice. So the extension uh, that we'll grab can be accessed via this little extensions button here. Uh, there's shortcuts for it, but I don't know what they are. Uh, in the box, FSFTP, uh, as you punch in here, the top and most popular version is out of, well, it's deprecated at this point, and so I wouldn't in, um, uh, encourage you to install that one. Uh, the next most top one, by this uh, Naughty Z Skunk or something like that, uh, this is the one that will favor, and I'm told as you look at the documentation for the Silixi Momo one, it's the offshoot or the modern maintained version of it, as whoever worked on this version had a lot of hits, but decided uh, they had other things to do. Punch the little install button, and it should say like installed and so forth. Uh, and maybe if I zip around a little bit and come back to this, I don't know, like uh, get rid of this search, then it should come up here in my like, installed stuff. Now that does stuff, some stuff in the background that we'll make use of in just a sync. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll do the other part of this, which is to set up a, a project folder for this. Um, so this is the only step that's sort of outside of VS Code or necessarily needs to be. Uh, I'm going to buzz over to my favorite file browser on Windows, Explore, and navigate to my desktop. And here's where I'll, uh, I'll establish a project folder uh, for CMSC216, which I'll name uncreatively uh, CMSC216 in here. You could possibly do that uh, within VS Code as well, and if you know what you're doing, but feel free to do whatever. Uh, so the steps here are modified to taste, uh, but this is a sort of vanilla way to doing it. And then over here, uh, you see an open folder because you haven't really done anything in VS Code before, or if you plop up here and find open folder, it doesn't matter too much, but we'll want to open that up to create a little context uh, where VS Code can do its business. Uh, there's a CMSC 2 and 6 folder, which I'll do. Uh, and I'll punch select folder and that'll open up over here in the browser side of things, the CMSC uh, 216. You can see it's empty over here. If you were to navigate into it on the desktop, it's empty in there as well. And again, this is just on my desktop. So if I zip over to the desktop, uh, you can see it's there. Uh, on Mac, uh, do something similar to that. Uh, however it is that Mac uh, folks do their business. Okay, um, so with that set up then, um, you can put whatever you want in this folder, but we're going to establish a subfolder, uh, which is what will be synced between the local machine, my laptop here, and Grace, the remote machine. And I'll name these things a little bit differently uh, so that it's obvious which is which. And that means you can plop things down in this folder that won't necessarily get uploaded and downloaded from Grace. Uh, and conversely, there'll be a, a certain folder we create on Grace uh, to make that stuff happen. Uh, I'll uncreatively call this one uh, by creating a new folder, uh, 216 sync. And the sync there is short for synchronize, as it'll be the contents of this folder uh, get uploaded and downloaded uh, to Grace and so forth. Uh, we'll next need to set up this SFTP extension, uh, which is part of what uh, the uh, sort of the extension that's going to manage this, this bit of business. Uh, and there's a wonky keystroke for this. I think it's 
control shift P or something like that. Um, but it might also as well be up here, just search uh, and you can type uh, SFTP. Nope, okay, never mind. Uh, let's see, so there's control uh, shift and then P and here, and this opens a uh, command interpreter that's particular to VS Code that allows you to invoke things, in this case, uh, about that SDP like, uh, um, uh, extension. Uh, since I just did this in my sort of practice session on this, it's up top, but you type SFTP and colon, and then probably at this point you'll see the config and you can just punch on there. So I'll have two effects. It'll create a little hidden directory in here, .vs code, uh, with the configuration file uh, for it. Uh, this has some default options in it, which we'll need to adjust. And in fact, I'm just gonna blow this entire thing away. We'll post a template for what you should have in here uh, on the written guide that's associated with this video. Uh, so I'm just gonna control A to select all that, delete it, and grab over my example version of this here. Uh, I can't remember if I can, yeah, I'm gonna open it in VS Code and just copy and paste over. Uh, so I'll grab all this stuff, copy it, and paste it into this version, uh, and then nix this one, and we'll talk about some of these options. Um, so this is an example that's particular to me and is particular to my setup uh, for these things. Um, so the name up here doesn't matter too much. I named it after the directory, but has little import. Host here is the remote machine that it will connect to, uh, grace.umd.edu. Uh, the protocol SFHP and port, uh, those are necessary there. This is a very important option, so make sure not to forget it, and there'll be warnings about oh, if you forgot it, what happens. It's an interactive auth true. It helps the parser that's gonna deal with getting your password and then uh, the two-factor authentication. Uh, there's interactivity involved in that, and so make sure to plop this thing down. It's not there by default, but if you paste the template, it'll be there. Username uh, is prof k for me, but you'd replace that with whatever, like uh, I'm uh, Morty Smith, uh, so in my handles, uh, msmith22, uh, but that'll be where I log in. Um, but I'm prof k, and if we want this to succeed, I'll have to, you know, leave that as it is. The remote path here is something that we'll need to sort out and can do so by logging into Grace and uh, fishing some stuff out and then potentially creating a subfolder there under sync, um, suggest uh, 216 uh, sync. Um, so to figure that part out, you'll need to, in a shell, uh, SSH into Grace. I have done so here over in uh, Windows Command, which you know you can type uh, CMD and get one to pop up, and then you know SSH to profk at grace.umd.edu, etc. Do your little two, two factor dance on Mac OS. You'd use terminal.app instead, uh, but I've already done that over here. Uh, and up in my home directory, if I type pwd to print the working directory. Uh, this lists out my home directory on here. So this AFS glue, glue, home, PR, prof K, home business. Uh, this is where I land by defaults when SSHing in. Uh, now I don't want to sync my whole home directory. And so I have set up over here a 216 sync directory. If I do a little listing, you can see that's called uh, 216 sync. Uh, if I change into that, 216 uh, sync. And do a listing here. Uh, you can see there's some stuff that's in here already. Uh, and so now that I'm in the directory that I want to be synchronized between the remote gross grace machine and my home laptop, I'll do a PWD. And here's the full unqualified path name for that. I'm going to do a little copy here. Uh, and oddly enough, somewhere up here is a little thing that if you edit, uh, you can find a copy button, which strangely is the enter key, uh, if you want to shortcut that. Uh, at any rate, if I buzz back over to VS Code, I plop down in here uh, that business, and as I paste it, it won't matter because it'll be you know the same exact path that you're in. This is the folder I want to sync to copy things from Grace or copy things to Grace as I make changes. The next option, context, that's this folder uh, that is created here. You can name that whatever you want so long as the context part here matches. Is when things are downloaded from this folder on Grace, they'll be downloaded into this folder, and it'll check if you have anything new in here, it'll synchronize it and upload it to Grace over here. 
Uh, the upload on save option, that's handy, as every time you save a file locally, it'll automatically send it off to Grace, so it's there. And a few of these other uh, sync options are you know, of modest interest. Uh, you can toggle those as you'd like, but uh, most of the false, true, false, false, false is known to work. Uh, all bets are off if uh, you have anything else. Now, VS Code, uh, like most sane code editors, has a number of clues about the state of things. For instance, this little dot up here means that this is an unsaved file. I'm gonna press Control S to save it. You can see it goes back to a, a, a X here. And this file is stored within uh, this little VS code as part of my project directory here. Uh, and is gonna allow uh, certain things to happen then these options will be used as connections are made there. Okay, so you can see over on the terminal side here, uh, within the command AXE, this folder has some stuff in it, uh, some text files I created while um, working, a zip file for the uh, lab one code, a lab zero one code stuff, etc. Uh, and what I'll do at this point is to synchronize the local directory to the remote directory. So download everything that's on the remote directory um, and get it here so that I can see it. We can also go in the other direction. We'll see how that works in, in just a second. Um, so right click on this uh, 216 sync directory and select on here the remote to local option. So download rather than this sync local to remote would be an upload. There's also a both directions. Uh, I haven't played with that one too much, so but we can futz with it in a second. Uh, so as I punch that, if all goes well, I should get a prompt up here for my Grace password. And so I'll punch that super secret password uh, in. Hopefully I got it right. And then this is the two-factor authentication. A punch one to say send a push notification. If you prefer phone calls, you can press uh, something else there. If I got this right, then you'll see uh, down here, very briefly, uh, there was a bunch of stuff whizzing by, which was at the SFTP uh, extension working. And you'll see over here then that the sync uh, directory now, by 216 sync, it has now mirrored the stuff that was in uh, up on Grace over here. And you can see I have a nice graphical file browser over here uh, and can make uh, changes to various things over here. Uh, for instance, uh, right now, if I buzzed on my terminal over into, let's see, lab01 code, I think right now if I test the quiz, uh, it's in good shape. Uh, however, uh, suppose it wasn't in good shape. Uh, I can double click the little questions.txt here. And for instance, uh, make an intentional mistake so that here I'll leave this one off and maybe select uh, this other option instead here. Uh, love this whole bit of business with, uh, you know, here's VS Code thinking it knows what I want here, and uh, it really, really doesn't. Um, so this is unsave, but as I save, you'll briefly see a flash down here, uh, which is SFTP uploading that part. Uh, I'll use a little uh, a pager over here, less on my questions.txt. Uh, and you can see if I go down a little ways, uh, what was checked here has been is checked up there. That's because this is now in sync. It's been uploaded from the local stuff uh, to the remote stuff. And so if I quit out of that and run the testing again, it was okay, but since I've changed, I have an intentionally bad answer. Uh, now I get failures associated with that. Um, so uh, this is a handy feature then because it's as easy as a control S in this file in order to get the upload part. And as I plop over here, could get rid of this thing, change it back, press save, this will automatically upload uh, and do another make uh, test quiz and we're back in business here on, on this part. Um, so a couple of caveats then. Um, suppose I make enough progress here that I would want to uh, get the zip associated with this. Um, as in I'm, I'm done with this thing and I want to get the zip to upload to grade scope. Uh, if you do a make zip here, uh, which will create the lab01 complete.zip, uh, and do a listing, you can see that's here. This is the one that I want to upload in order to get credit for this uh, lab. Um, the local file browser here hasn't reflected that. And that's on account of a change was made on Grace, but my local system doesn't know anything about that. Uh, to get that uh, uh, sort of synced, this will be a remote to local bus sync. Uh, so as I do that, I press enter, it'll take a second. And now you see a couple changes, and most importantly, this lab01complete.zip is present. And so 
in all likelihood, there's probably some keyboard shortcuts that might sort of allow you to automate some of that syncing and you might be able to turn something on or off. But at bare minimum, you're sort of selecting some options and moving things around here on that. Uh, but this is then be the file, it's stored locally and you can see where this is at. Uh, if you, for instance, buzz up here and say, hey, show me where this is at in my file explorer. Uh, it's right here off my user directory on the desktop in the CMC216 folder, but here's the sync directory. And if I go in there, uh, there's lab one code, this is the zip file, and inside of here, uh, here's the lab01 complete.zip, uh, the stuff that I want to upload uh, to get that happen. So then, um, this is a somewhat more ergonomic way to do code editing. Uh, for instance, I was really working on this in earnest. I probably next uh, come over to this uh, Hello C program and start adding some things in to do stuff like, uh, let me indent here and do some ending line business here, maybe a comma, uh, save that, which will upload it, and then come back over to my terminal and do a make test code uh, here. Uh, and this will show me, oh, here's the ending line that wasn't there before. Uh, and then I continue on to sort of make changes to, to try to improve uh, the quality of this code and now pass the tests eventually. Um, so folks in some cases like this a lot better. Uh, I will say this isn't the best extension I know of for doing remote editing, but is uh, the extension that TAs have found works most consistently with Grace. The best extension that I know of, remote editing, has been found at times to be incompatible or inconsistent with its compatibility on Grace. And so we're not going to demo that right now. You're free to explore on that front. Uh, for instance, if you come over here and search for remote, um, remote development and remote SSH, uh, these are the things that I've seen work at other universities in the past, but I'm still working on getting the folks who administer Grace uh, to enable them to work properly here on a consistent basis. So uh, that, in a nutshell, is the SFTP extension on VS Code, very popular uh, code editor for the use these days. I don't use it myself uh, because Emacs does all this stuff and has been doing so for the last 15 years when VS Code was still just a twinkle in some developer's eye. But uh, if you're curious, uh, you can make use of this uh, technique if you find it to be more ergonomic than uh, your MOBA X term or the X quartz stuff. All right, that's all I got for you today. Happy hacking all, and I'll see you in class.